So hello everyone, my name is John Benderwaffles Aljets, and today I'm doing a commentary on one of my speed developments. I've had a few people in the comments and on Twitter ask me if I could sort of talk through my thought processes on some of these speed developments. So I figured, you know what, this is a great time to do that. So let's just uh, jump over to that and uh, get into it. I have queued up the very first speed development that I ever did. Um, it's the castle in the snow. Uh, a little bit of background before I jump into it. This speed development came about back when, within the RPG Maker tutorial series, the idea was that everyone was kind of making a game alongside. And uh, there was sort of a homework assignment to do the the sort of snowy castle that you can kind of see in the... It's a little dark, but in the background there and so i realized that okay so i'm doing these tutorials i'm gonna have to do it myself and at the time i was watching the odd ones out his like speed drawings that he used to do and i thought to myself if i have to do this map why don't i turn it into content and this could be sort of a learning tool for people um so i decided you know what i'm gonna do sort of a speed drawing but with maps uh, now I know that other people had done this before. Um, I believe that echo had done a few, uh, few other smaller, t uh, RPG maker YouTubers here or there, but I had never seen anything like this. So I thought that I was, you know, doing something real, real exciting by, uh, doing speed developments, but you know, I, I put it out there and you guys received it pretty well. And, uh, so I continued and I think that we're, we're almost 40 episodes or maybe we're over 40 episodes of speed development in, um, yeah, that's a lot of, that's a lot of maps. Uh, so let's just jump right into this first episode. I don't have a ton to say about this one, but I felt like this was a logical place to start. So let's just jump right in here. So I'm going to be pausing and such as we go. So I wanted, as I said, it was going to be a snowy map. And this right here sort of shows my, uh, I guess at the time, inexperience with the tile set. I had been using RPG Maker for a while, but I hadn't really done too much snow. So I just immediately started drawing walls, not realizing that there's a, there's a snow tile, like a snowy wall tile. So I did this whole sort of outer wall and then as you'll see i'll very quickly realize oh wait there's a snow tile and <laughs> then replace it um and i do the same thing with like the the little towers that are in the corner um <laughs> yeah here we go i start replacing all the tiles because i'm like oh man i'm an idiot there's there's snow tiles uh, and actually there's snowy wall tiles as well, but I don't use those for some reason. And that right there, that's, that's me. I was trying to play with, with, uh, sort of getting different layers into the map. Having different elevations is usually a good idea when you're making a map. But in this case, uh, I didn't think that it looked right. Looking back at it now, I honestly think that it doesn't look half bad. Um, I think if I was doing this today, I probably would have gone with, this tile, my initial thought was this little side here didn't look right when I was making it. Um, now that I'm looking at it and like really like stopping and analyzing it, I think it looks fine. But, you know, it's a good idea to have different elevations just to get, you know, sort of different feels to your map. It makes it feel a little bit more real. And there I go with the snowy walls. So here I go with all of these buildings. This is a very classic way of doing buildings with an RPG maker. It's, uh, you know... I'm not trying to break any molds with the way that I'm designing things here. Some people like buildings that are two tiles tall. I prefer buildings that are one tile tall, unless it's a two-story building, because to me it just makes makes sense. But you know, I'm just kind of trying to flesh this out, trying to make this place feel like it's a like it's a populated city, because it's meant to be like the citadel, like the capital of this kingdom. So there's there's going to be a lot of buildings and a lot of space for people. Um, and then as you see, I kind of. I kind of start drawing like a central like plaza almost with the dragon statue. And that's, that's something that I, I touched upon a little bit in my map making in my map making tutorials, but it's, it's a good idea to try to have some sort of landmark 
in your maps that is going to be memorable for players. That's going to be something that is going to be a feature that they're going to think back to and think, oh, I remember that from this town. So something like that, like that's that's something super simple. But if someone's playing this map, they'll remember, oh, this was the city with the dragon statue right in the middle. So it's a good idea to just have have landmarks for players. It also really helps with navigation if you have a more like complex map. This is a, a super simple uh, sort of city map. But if you're going to have a more complicated map, having landmarks is super useful for your players. Uh, and of course, like with anything when you're mapping, you have to be making adjustments. You have to be changing stuff. Stuff doesn't quite fit. And so you move stuff around. Like if you notice, I moved the plaza a little bit. And initially I had different statues and like that sort of stuff. You know, you got to play with it and eventually you'll, you know, you'll figure out something that works. So that little side building, I, I believe that my thought with that was that that was going to be like a like a temple, but it never really came to be. And now I'm seeing that I'm missing the top of a tree tile over there and I'm wondering if I fix it. It's going to bug me if I didn't fix it because this this video has been out for a couple of years now. Well, OK, for a year, actually now. And if I didn't fix that tile. OK, there I go. Whew. All right. So really, like this town, this town's looking like someplace that like a player would probably have a lot of fun exploring. It's super simple, as I said, but there's still plenty of do plenty to do. And now you get into the to the outside stuff uh, with the river and all that sort of stuff. The river just kind of gives the gives the town character. Um, if you have something like that that's represented on the world map, it's also a really good idea to have that represented on the internal maps. I don't think that there is a river on the world map, but it just, you know, it's a good idea. Now we get into something that a lot of people ask questions about, and that is uh, my sort of, let's say, obsession with uh, trees. So one thing that I very commonly will do is if there's space sort of on the outside borders of a map, I'll fill it in with trees. And one thing that people often ask is, why do you take the time to map to place tiles in places where players are never going to be able to see. Um, if you look at this map, there's trees well past the view distance of the player. And really, like that comes down to the simple fact that these maps, I don't design them for players. That's That sounds weird. But 99% of my speed development maps are never meant to be played. They are made explicitly for speed developments. So when I'm thinking about what you see on the map, I'm not thinking about what a player would see. I'm thinking about what you, the viewer, will see. And I'm trying to make the map look as complete, as full, and just as beautiful as possible. So, you know, that's why I might sometimes do some stuff that, from a mapping perspective, doesn't make a ton of sense. Now, it is important to note that those sort of things... Whoa, there's my old end card. It is important to note that those sort of things like this map is still going to be completely playable for players even though there's stuff on the outside fringes of the map i'm trying to get to where it's like the full map okay that's kind of dark anyways like just because there's stuff like way outside of the player's viewpoint doesn't mean that this map isn't going to be playable um it's just something that you know for me, as someone who makes videos, I'm thinking about how it's going to look in the video first and how it's going to play kind of second. Obviously, I, I stick to certain rules within uh, map creation that are designed for play, for instance, uh, making sure that you don't have spaces that are, you know, one tile wide. To me, that feels very claustrophobic. Now that I mention that, there's a space right there that does that, but it's it's one of those sort of rules that you can kind of bend on occasion. You just don't want to make a habit of it. But, you know, overall, this this first speed development, I feel was it's not the best map. I want to go back and revisit this map at some point, do a better castle in the snow. Maybe that's maybe that's an idea for the next video. But, you know, I just kind of you know, it, I feel like it was a good launching point for the series. I feel like this is something that you guys have, as I said, have responded overwhelmingly positively about. And I just think that even though, as I said, this map, 
I don't think was my best. It has led to me becoming a better mapper. And I hope that the series as a whole that started with this video has helped make you better mappers. So I guess that's where I'm going to end this. I don't totally have a ton to say about this, but if this is something that you guys like, just leave a comment down below. Be sure to like this video, uh, subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when I upload new content. That's the whole spiel that I have to do, but you know, all that being said, I just want to say thank you guys for sticking with me through the tutorial series. It's all said and done now, as many of you who have seen the final episode know, it's it's over. Um, there will be no more RPG Maker MV and v VX Ace tutorials, not in the same manner. Um, I might have some stuff coming in the future that's RPG rid rpg maker related sorry uh but uh yeah keep an eye out for that so yeah guys if you as i said if you enjoy this video let me know and uh just be sure to have a good one guys and gals just everybody everybody have a good one